Good afternoon. Welcome to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, where the Buffaloes of Colorado, ranked ninth, come in and try to take down the Jayhawks of Kansas. We're 4-1. Uh, all of our victories have come on the road, but to be fair, four of our five games have come on the road. And so now we're home. We're going to be home, I think, for the next two games. we got Colorado. Then we got a and I think a and is also ranked. a and of course, being Texas a and at home. Hopefully, we don't end up with like a better you know, road record, because currently we're undefeated on the road and winless at home. And let me tell you, we would remain uh, winless at home after this game. If this play is anything to judge... Things just didn't start out well for the old uh, Kansas Jayhawks. Kind of similar to what the actual play on the field was for KU uh, this weekend against Memphis. It was terrible. Uh, I was at the game. That was I, I wrote in a little like a uh, document or something just to keep my to, to you know, keep track of what I've been thinking this whole season. I wrote this was basically one of the uh, a Type C KU game. Uh, I believe there are. Four types of games, and of course there are there are, there are some that don't fit in these typical archetypes. This one, this plays like a fumble, and then uh, we get a first down off of it somehow. Colorado has already scored though; they are basically unstoppable on the run. Their option play is impeccable. Their uh, running back, I believe, was uh, Chris Brown that year, who had that famous game against Nebraska, where he just destroyed the uh, the at the time number one ranked Cornhuskers defense, and they won like 62 to 20 or 34 or something like that. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Jayhawks, I don't think, will get any wins this year. We are currently 0-2. I, you know, it's probably going to be 0-12. That's unfortunate, but you know what? You got to start somewhere. It's sad. It was a, just kind of destruction by Memphis. I said this was a Type C game. Fumble here by the freshman running back. Uh, but we do recover it. However, we had a drive going, and it stalls, and we had to punt, and Colorado got the ball back. Anyway... Uh, I said type C game. Type A game is what I call loss domination. That's when the other team just kind of comes out and destroys you. Maybe I said it was type B, actually. But type A is a uh, loss domination. Other team just comes out. You never have a chance to begin with. That was uh, Baylor in 2013 was one of the games that was like that. Oklahoma State in 2013. I'm just thinking of games that I've been at. Where the other team just kind of came out and it was like, all right, well, you know, we don't have a shot. We genuinely just don't have any sort of hope in this game, and that's it. 7-0 Colorado, so manageable at the end of the first quarter, theoretically, right? Right? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. We could come back and win this. Uh, and then, it's a pretty decent coverage by the defense there, but just a great pass and a great catch for quarterback number one for the Buffaloes. Type B is what we saw last weekend, though, against Memphis. We took a 10-0 lead. And then, uh, you know, we had success going you know, going after the ball on defense, going for fumbles. And then, for whatever reason, we just kind of stopped doing what worked. So I think Memphis kind of had let their guard down at the beginning of the game. And it was 10-0 with, you know, about 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. It was, a, you know, it was pretty exciting. And then it was 10-10 at the end of the first. And then it was, uh, like, 30-something to 10 at the end of the second. And, you know, it just kind of snowballed from there. Memphis was a better team this week, but uh, the fact of the matter is everybody else is also a better team than Kansas, which is why I believe we will go 0-12. But Type B is the uh, the early tees where in KU uh, just basically looks like they're going to win and then totally falls apart. That's the second Colorado touchdown. And they're up 14. No! Are they up 21-0 by this point? I don't even remember. Fumble on the kickoff, as you do. That's a very Kansas football way uh, to lose <laughs> the ball there. Colorado gets the ball back, throws a pass, and that's a touchdown. So uh, another touchdown for the Buffaloes. And I believe by this point, Colorado's quarterback had thrown three passes and had thrown three touchdowns. It, it's amazingly enough. He, he was just, I mean... There was just nothing KU could do this whole game. Almost intercepted there. Colorado gets the ball back. The quarterback runs for a first down. Almost run, no, yeah, almost runs for a touchdown. And then they call the timeout. And they just give it off. And that's a touchdown. So it's 28, maybe 35. It is 35 to 0 at the end of the second. It was a 20 point, a 28 point 
second quarter for the Colorado Buffaloes. We just wanted anything to happen. I'm trying to hail Marion. They're just trying to like have a drive continue maybe. Almost got the first down there. Didn't happen. And then just to make matters worse, they were still gunning for the end zone. And to make things even more worse, they almost got it. Like if one guy hadn't been there, that was another touchdown. So <laughs> four completions for the Colorado quarterback, three for touchdowns. One likely would have led to one had the uh, thing not stopped. I don't know why there was supposed to be a scoreboard there, but I don't even care. Sp scoreboard basically broken. 35-0, Colorado. And there is just no hope for the Jayhawks. Like there is basically this season. That's a good catch, and I thought he got a touchdown there, but apparently not. On the next play, this that was probably the big bright spot for KU. It was wide open in the end zone there, so it is now just 35-7. to And you know what? It's not unrealistic to see KU make a 35-point comeback on the Colorado Buffaloes. Up, uh, in, back in 2010, that was their one win uh, in the Big 12. In fact, that, that one win in the Big 12 stood for about two more years. And uh, 2013 was, no, three more years. 2013 was the time they finally broke it. Number 22 for Colorado, just basically unstoppable. It would look like we had guys in position to take them down, and then they just wouldn't you know, get to them. They'd get blocked. Or they just couldn't get him down. So, uh, accidentally messed up the recording of the touchdown that ensued. So, it is indeed 42 to 7 for the Buffaloes, if anybody was wondering, if there was any doubt that Colorado was dominant there. This is a decent punt return. Right now, I'm basically just showing a selection of the few highlights that Kansas had from after, after it was 42 to 7. There was really nothing much we could do. Not, no, guard, no yards really gained on the option. The option wasn't really working. The, uh, the pass wasn't really working, the run wasn't really working, now the option was working great for Colorado and just the handoff off the middle, that's not even the same guy, that's a different guy, that's number 42 who gets several yards on there. End of the third, it's 42-7. to seven. You can pretty much confirm this game's over, I'm just going to stop referencing what happens on the screen and start talking about actual football. My Big 12 prediction, at the beginning of this year I really thought Texas was going to turn it around this year and be a big surprise to in Colorado. Uh, they, they're not, they're not going to do it this year, I think. It'll actually, I think it'll be Oklahoma now. Um, uh, I think they're just the more complete team of, of everybody in the, uh, in the conference. I think they're just genuinely pretty good this year. For whatever reason, I'll show a punt here. I think I just wanted to show, like, yeah, no, we're done. We didn't even go for it on fourth down. And then I thought I had decent punt coverage there, and he just broke the tackle, because that's the way that life works sometimes. Big game predictions, though. I do think OU misses the playoff. Uh, I think Texas actually gets the upset on uh, Oklahoma, even though it's not really going to be a huge upset. But I think Texas beats Oklahoma. I think TCU gets Baylor, but somebody probably beats TCU at some point. Somebody probably, somebody else probably beats Baylor. End of the game is 49-7. Absolute garbage. Um, I'm surprised that many people are still in the stands, the, the virtual stands. And uh, overall... OU wins the conference but misses the 14 playoff. And my guess for the playoff, you know, don't call this a prediction, but call it a guess because that's what it is. We got number four, Clemson out of the ACC. I think they got the best chance to kind of run it there. Uh, number three, I actually do think it'll be UCLA out of the Pac 12. Ole Miss out of the uh, Southeast because I don't, uh, I think this will be the year. This is like kind of one of those years where Alabama is going to drop a couple of games randomly. And then number one is either going to be Oklahoma, or uh, Ohio State, rather. In Michigan State, whoever wins their game. That's it. Sorry about this. Good night. We'll have a better game next week against AM. Thanks.